Hey everybody, it's Lon Sivan and it's time for your weekly wrap up and I want to begin first by letting you know we didn't get any new Patreon supporters this week. I thought about just pulling the slide out completely but I know people would ask so uh, nobody new contributed to the Patreon in the last week but if we get any new ones we'll put them on for next week. But I do of course always want to thank those of you who have contributed to the Patreon and to the Google fan funding and to everyone who watches on a regular basis too because all of those things go into growing this channel and it is continuing to grow. I'm very excited about where everything is headed. So what did we do this week? Well, we did four things this week. Uh, we looked at the Lenovo Yoga book. A lot of you were curious about this, kind of a, a very small two-in-one with a completely keyless keyboard that also doubles as a drawing surface. We looked at the new Fire TV stick from Amazon. This is a $39 uh, Alexa equipped TV box that works pretty well all things considered so you can see what that's all about. We also looked at the Moto G4 Play which is a smartphone you can get on Amazon for $99 and it has full carrier compatibility so here in the United States it works on Verizon and Sprint and T-Mobile and AT&T as well as all the prepaid services that work off of those services so pretty good deal for that phone you can check that out and I also did a live stream of the screens device that I've been talking about for a while now this is a Kickstarter that I contributed to about a year ago in fact we interviewed the creator of this uh, when he first rolled this out and what it does is it lets you take in four HDMI video streams and composite them into a multi-layered production like you see here this is not screens running this it's a TriCaster but uh, screens has the potential to deliver what you're seeing in front of you uh, for a lot less money than a pro level piece of gear would and they've been very smart at uh, targeting this towards game streamers because it supports 60 frames per second video and it really does work quite well but there are a lot of rough edges on it at the moment still too many for me to do a full-fledged review of it yet because they're still changing things and making things work better so you'll see in that video there's definitely some audio syncing problems but they got the green screen thing working pretty well the layering of all these different video windows is working great so there's a lot to like about this and I'm looking forward to playing more with it uh, as they continue to improve it but you can check out that live stream and see what it's all about and now it's time for some Q&A and a lot of you wrote in about the Nintendo Switch which is Nintendo's new game console that will replace its Wii U so what this does is it incorporates both a home console that plugs into your TV along with something portable so that tablet unit drives everything and when you take it out of its cradle it disconnects from your television and allows you to take the very same game on the road with presumably no difference in the graphical quality of it which is pretty cool it's kind of like a console we've all wanted our whole lives and uh, what was really intriguing to me is that it's powered by NVIDIA hardware. So uh, the switch here is running with a similar hardware, I would imagine, to what we've seen on the K1 tablet that we've reviewed here on the channel, as well as the Shield TV. And uh, NVIDIA has gotten very good at making these low-powered chips that deliver really tremendous graphical horsepower because both of those Shield devices have been on the market for probably two or three years now, and I have yet to test something that uh, comes close to them on uh, other mobile devices running with Android. These are really powerful chips that they've come up with, and it looks like they found a pretty big client here to uh, test out this technology on a broader scale. So this is pretty exciting stuff, but uh, the, the truth is I probably won't review it. And uh, the reason is twofold. One is that everyone's going to be reviewing it, so my chances of getting uh, any sizable amount of traffic here is going to be very difficult. I like to look for things that are a little more obscure, maybe things that don't get covered as much on other channels. That's how I've been able to build where I've uh, been able to get to so far. So at some point I'll be large enough that I can have a share of that voice on these big product releases, but at the moment I uh, don't have that. But uh, I probably won't though because of the fact that Nintendo really doesn't treat independent creators fairly or in my opinion even legally in the sense that uh, they, they pick and choose who can earn money reporting on their products. They created a program about two years ago called the Nintendo Creators Program where uh, Nintendo goes out, they find content that uh, contains their gameplay footage, they claim that content as their own, they leave your content up but they take all your revenue away and then you can go and apply to Nintendo separately and beg them for uh, the right to earn a share back of what they took from you and I just don't think that's appropriate especially for people that are reviewing games that falls under fair use and although Nintendo isn't taking the content down they are choosing which journalists which, and most reviewers are journalists in my opinion uh, which journalists can earn money reporting about their company which I don't think is right at all so I don't really don't want to try to promote this company any more than I have to because of how they're treating independent creators but you know organizations like GameSpot and other large 
uh, publications do get the ability to earn money off of their reviews, but many YouTubers do not. I think it's a horrible practice, and I really wish uh, people wouldn't give Nintendo as much attention as they do until they change their tune, because if they want this console to succeed, a big part of that now is getting these game streamers and YouTubers excited about it. And although there's a lot of excitement for this thing, I think a lot of people will probably not cover it as heavily once Nintendo starts taking down content or claiming content from everyone who's spending time uh, reviewing and promoting their products. So this will probably be the last time I talk about this one for a while, but I did notice something that the press didn't really pick up on in this whole big release this week. So Nintendo released a trailer that Google Play actually drew attention to. In fact, they are soliciting a comment from some of their followers to say, which games are you most excited for? And it was intriguing to see what is essentially a competing mobile platform uh, drawing attention to a competitor. Both Nintendo and Google Play sell games to people that run on mobile devices. And it was kind of unusual for me to see that. So my theory is, based on this tweet, and this is just speculation, uh, that this tablet is going to probably run an Android operating system, and as such, it'll probably be compatible with Android apps. But it likely won't be something where those Nintendo games cross over to Google Play, but a lot of Google Play stuff will cross over into uh, the Nintendo ecosystem, which I think will give that device a lot of, uh, in, of interest to folks because they can take a lot of their mobile smartphone games and run them on their Nintendo console. So that's going to be something to look for. I don't think this tweet was an accident. I think it was calculated, and let's see what happens next. And this next uh, note here comes in from Jason Hunt and the Tan Man, who uh, let me know that FameBit was purchased by Google. And if you haven't been following me all that long, you've probably seen me uh, do rather long disclaimers on my videos before every review. And the reason I do that is actually because of FameBit. And what happened about a year and a half ago was that they had offered me the Ring doorbell for free, along with a check for $250 to review that doorbell. And I turned it down because I said, I don't do reviews for money, first of all, and I certainly don't guarantee positive reviews. And when I told the representative from FameBit that had reached out to me on this, uh, this product, uh, she wrote back and said that, oh, well, this would need to be a positive review. In other words, uh, they expected every review that they were paying for uh, to be positive. And I just said, no way, I'm not doing this, and I'm out. Uh, but what I had done later is actually purchased the doorbell. This was back in January of this year, and I reviewed it. But at the beginning of the review, I had said what had happened prior between FameBit Ring and me because I felt it was appropriate having uh, disclosed this to the viewership uh, when it happened that I had turned this offer down. I wanted to make clear to everyone watching that this was not something that I was being paid paid to review and uh, wow, did a firestorm develop after that because Ring wrote in, appalled that this would have been offered, uh, FameBit threw them under the bus and it was this whole big explosion of who knows what. Uh, you can see down below in the video description on that master playlist, I did a whole long video about everything that transpired there. So it looks like uh, Google has purchased the FameBit agency, uh, which I think is actually a good thing. I'm, I'm sad that bad people are going to be cashing out with this, but uh, nonetheless, I think it will improve the platform because Google will certainly be a better steward of of appropriate disclosures than FameBit ever was. And I think from Google's perspective, they're trying to uh, find ways to earn more money with this platform they have because another speculation of mine is that I think there is more money being made on the platform that doesn't uh, go through Google than what actually does go through Google. So of course, Google sells ads on the YouTube platform. Those are the ads that you see in the pre-rolls and the mid-rolls and all that stuff. But uh, there's a lot of other side deals that are getting made all the time between creators and brands. And FameBit was one organization that was uh, trying to automate that process of allowing uh, brands to connect directly with creators and having native advertising. In other words, in the middle of the video, someone might say, hey, buy this iPhone. Uh, that's a native ad. And FameBit and many other agencies are facilitating those kinds of things. And although YouTube takes a cut of those pre-roll ads, they have not been asking for or taking any portion of the deals that are being made with these things. So FameBit was pocketing uh, their commission 100% on YouTubers. And I think Google has been trying to uh, find ways to find more ways to advertise on their own platform. And I think it's a good thing for creators. It's good for the community because uh, we won't have some of these shadier organizations running these kinds of things. And I think it will bring some normalcy to it and uh, hopefully provide some uh, greater disclosures and transparency for consumers. Because ultimately, by the way, um, you know, how people perceive the platform is how I'm ultimately perceived. And I want people to know that I'm not on the
to take here. And I really, that's why I try so hard to disclose and be transparent about everything so that you all know where I'm coming from. And I certainly take sponsors. And when I do, I tell you, uh, even if they're not sponsoring the video that I'm doing, you'll know that they were a sponsor in the past. So that way uh, you can judge whether or not I'm being uh, totally upfront with you or not in that case. So those are the things that I like to think about. And it's very hard in the 21st century to be a salesperson and the talent and the journalist here, but that's the reality given uh, the economics of the modern video era. Now, I wrote a whole bunch of stuff on my Facebook page. You can check that out at lon.tv slash famebit, and that video that uh, really goes through the whole process is also there, so definitely uh, check that out. Now, I did want to point out one thing in this famebit debacle that I haven't covered before, and that is FTC guidelines related to famebit's terms of service for creators. Now, back in October of 2015, uh, just a month or two before our our whole big debacle blew up, uh, there were zero references to uh, FTC guidelines within the FameBit terms of service. Now, we had our thing happen in January, which of course got a lot of attention. And then by uh, today, if I look on their website now with their terms of service, there are no less than 10 FTC references within their uh, terms of services for creators. So I don't know what happened in between uh, now and then, but clearly something changed within their organization and they suddenly got a lot more uh, uh, responsive to Federal Trade Commission Commission guidelines and communicating those guidelines to creators. Because before this whole thing happened in January, there was no mention of disclosures, no mention of what the FTC guidelines were. It was kind of like a wild west or look the other way. And it looks like things changed very rapidly after this whole incident happened in January. And a few folks that I know that are still on the platform have been telling me that this FTC stuff is popping up everywhere now uh, where it didn't before. So that's a good thing. And maybe, you know, we were a part of that. I don't know. But I'm just glad to see that a more responsible steward is taking over this agency and Hopefully they'll grab some other ones too, because again, I really think this uh, is pretty a, a pretty negative thing for the whole community to have all this uh, uh, payola going on out there. Now, one thing that hasn't changed is that I am still banned from the FameBit platform, and I was banned the night I published that video about how they're not following FTC guidelines. So clearly there wasn't a lot of room for whistleblowers within their uh, account structure. Maybe that will change when Google takes over. Who knows? I never took a deal from FameBit uh, just because they rubbed me the wrong way, but it was just kind of funny to see them ban me outright. Uh, when I started raising questions about how uh, they were not technically following the law all that well. But we'll see what happens next with this new uh, acquisition there. And our final question comes in from John Munoz and Steve Murray about the new Netgear X10 router. And this is a router that apparently can run Plex and a bunch of other stuff. It's got 10 gigabit Ethernet. It is a uh, powerhouse of a router. And my opinion is that's cool, but I, I think I like to keep my router separate from other stuff. I like my router to be like dedicated to routing, even if it has the horsepower to do a little more. I think I like my NAS devices to kind of be my media servers and my, my routers to route uh, for a whole host of reasons, but I don't really want to have too many things loaded up on there that might impact my internet connection here because a lot of stuff is going on in this house. I got the YouTube channel. We're streaming out a lot of things. We're uploading a lot of content. I like my network to work. Uh, so for me, I think I'll keep my Plex server running on a small PC or on a NAS device and let the router do the routing. But it's great to see though just how powerful uh, these little chips are getting that you can actually have a router that can do all of those things in a pretty low powered package. So I think we're going to be seeing a lot of cool stuff on the horizon that uh, will allow, it's, allow us to do a lot more with a lot less, both in uh, cost and power consumption. And now it's time to announce the winner of our Blue Life One X2 phone that we had last week announced on the wrap up. The winner is Marius Panario, and I will be dropping you an email in the next day or two to get your address and get this out to you. So congratulations, and we'll probably do another giveaway in the next week or two. I got a bunch of stuff piling up, so uh, stay tuned. There'll be more uh, to come, and definitely make sure you're on my email list because some giveaways are only announced on my email list. So be on the lookout for that. So this week, we're going to take a look at a lot of stuff, hopefully. I'm going to try to catch up on a lot of the smaller, quicker items that I've been meaning to do. So we've got the HyperX gaming headset that I talked about last week. I actually shot this last week. Weekend, but uh, this week's videos were getting a lot of traffic and I didn't want to interrupt that flow. So you'll see that one very soon, an affordable device. Uh, we've also got that Lacie hard drive that I'll be getting to shortly and a new Lenovo monitor that's about $130 but supports 75 hertz, which is pretty cool because most of these uh, inexpensive 1080p monitors have been 60 hertz. This one is 75, so maybe a little better for gamers. So we'll be uh, taking a look at that one. I also got in the new Echo Dot. So I think I'll be doing a kind of an update on Alexa and my thoughts on that. 
so be on the lookout. Again, this is all um, things that I hope to do this week. It doesn't mean I'm actually going to get to all of them, but these are things that are on my mind and on my priority list. And now there's a Q&A for you, which is Alexa, actually. I'm curious which of these devices you use in your home, because for me, it's still kind of kind of, I don't know, creepy to have this device just listening all, all the time, even though it's not sending voice data back until you ask it to. Uh, but I'm just curious how you feel about these devices. Google has one coming out soon. Of course, you've got your iPhones that can do it with Siri, and uh, we've got Alexa that's been around for a while, too. A lot of people that get, get their Alexa devices really, really like and become dependent on them. I have yet to feel that way about it, just because it can't answer every question I have. But I've been playing around with the uh, Google app on my phone, uh, just asking it questions, and it's been responding to just about everything I've asked it. It's almost like the Star Trek uh, bridge computer, and it's been really cool. And I think when the Google device comes out, I'm going to be really eager to see if this might be something I'll leave on all the time, because I've yet to see a compelling reason to leave my Alexa device plugged in all the time, but I'm curious as to uh, what you all might be doing with that. And I got a couple of really cool things coming in from China. Actually, three really cool things coming in from, from China. So we have the uh, Xiaomi Air laptop, which is a small uh, Core M powered Windows laptop that uh, looks really cool. So I'm eager to try that out. That should be here hopefully in the next two weeks or so. I'm also going to be getting in the GPD Win, which is a handheld Windows device. It runs Windows 10 with an Atom Cherry Trail, Trail, blah, Cherry Trail processor, uh, and it resembles the GPD XD, which is an Android handheld, which is still my favorite go-to little gaming device. Uh, this one is a similar form factor, but runs Windows, so I'm really, I just can't wait to try it out, so hopefully that will be here soon. And I'm also getting in the Minix Neo Z83-4, which is a small Windows TV box that uh, isn't all that expensive either. So really cool stuff coming from China. As soon as it all gets here, sometimes it takes like weeks for it to arrive, I will uh, definitely interrupt whatever stuff I'm doing and do those first because those are uh, things that I know all of you will be interested in. So stay tuned for that. Now, if you want to help the channel, you can. You can go to lon.tv slash Patreon to make a monthly contribution to the channel. You can also make a one-time contribution through fan funding at uh, lon.tv through YouTube. And if you do that option, the one-time contribution, please email me and let me know that you did it so I can thank you on the wrap-up and also add you to the end credits. YouTube doesn't tell me when people do that. We're also still running with our Plex affiliate promotion. So if you uh, go to Plex and sign up for a free account, no credit card required, uh, we will get a small small fee for you doing that. So uh, please, if you haven't signed up for Plex and are curious about it, definitely give it a shot. It will help the channel. Even if you don't pay any money, uh, we still get a, a small portion of an affiliate share on that. So definitely check that out if you're curious about Plex. Now, if you want to engage with the channel, you can go to lon.tv slash email to get on my email list. My Facebook page has always got stuff on there. I post quite a bit throughout the week at lon.tv slash Facebook. Uh, the Reddit is still there at lon.tv slash Reddit. I know, I know I need to spend more time on there, but please uh, keep building that community up. And we have my store at lon.tv slash store, and that is where I sell a lot of the items that I bought to review. So there's a bunch of stuff up there right now, I think at a pretty decent price. So the exact item that you saw in the video is what I am selling, uh, and there's only one uh, per listing. So once that one item is sold, it's gone. I'm not, I'm not becoming a uh, Amazon or anything like that. Uh, so definitely check it out. We've got some good prices on there, I think. They're certainly below what the new ones cost, but if you uh, want to get a lower price, make an offer. I do want to clear out some of that inventory and make some room for new stuff. So uh, make me an offer. Maybe I'll be feeling generous. And that'll do it for this week on the channel. I want to thank all of you for your continued viewership. We are still growing. We're, I think we're up to 109,000 subscribers already. So things are uh, moving on the way to 200,000. Hopefully we'll be getting a word of my uh, YouTube play button trophy soon. We'll do a live stream for that. And again, I just want to thank everyone for your continued viewership and support. Please keep those questions and comments coming. This is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters, including Gold Level supporter Eric. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.